I've bounced in more beds than there's hairs on my you-know-what. I've bred enough bastards to crew my own ship. I've never had time to stay home and raise one of them. So what will I have when I've worn out my whip? Worn out my whip, worn out my whip. Who'll call me dad when I've worn out my whip? I've got an itch to go do something different. Hi everybody, I'm Cameron Goble and this is Longtail Gamer and you are here, way over here. Longtail Gamer is for the games that have withstood the test of time. that are cheap to buy, they have a lot of support already in the community, and do you know why they've lasted so long? Hmm? It's because they're darn fun, that's why. The people have spoken and I have heard you. You asked for a game about accountancy and pirates colliding on the high seas, and I've thought about it long and hard. I'm going to give it to you anyway. This time on Longtail Gamer, I share with you my current capitalist obsession, Patrician 3, Rise of the Han. The Hanseatic League started as a loose alliance of merchants in the late Middle Ages. The Holy Roman Empire and the local monarchs might have ruled the land routes, but the League's merchants had a little empire of their own on the seas and along the coastlines. Towns were connected through merchant guilds, which controlled trade across the waters. The League wasn't just about burgeoning capitalism, of course. Politics and warfare entered the mix. Well, okay, maybe that's part of burgeoning capitalism too, but however you slice the moral and ethical questions, this is a busy world of deals, opportunities, and risks. Patrician III casts me in the role of an up-and-coming merchant in the Hanseatic towns along the northern edge of Europe. The challenge is to carve out a piece of the league for myself by building economic power and flexing my own social muscle where it'll do me the most good. Eventually, I hope to rise to patrician, where I can start making policies and directing the Hanseatic League itself. To be honest, I haven't made it there yet. There's a lot to master in this game. My main route to wealth, at least at first, is through straight-up trade. I just click on the trade building here and have a look at the local markets. I can see all the goods available, beer, bricks, cloth, and so on. Here's what it costs to buy some, here's what it costs to sell some. Oh, hey, great price on iron goods here. I gotta get me some of that action. So as I buy, the market prices change instantly to reflect the change in supply and demand. So I need to be careful not to drive the prices too far out of whack by buying or selling too much. The manifest also shows me how much I paid on average for my cargo. Very handy when it comes time to sell later on. Gotta keep my profit margin up, you know. So I'll just fill up my hold here. And now my ship is low in the water, fat with cargo, ready to sail. But where to? On the map, I can see all the ports and what they're good at making. Lubick produces industrial wares, iron goods, timber, pitch, that sort of stuff. And Malmo, just a jaunt across the waves, is more agricultural. They make cloth and meat and the like. Seems like they could use some of what I've got, and I know my people back home will appreciate fresh beer and meat. So I've got the beginnings of a trade route going here. Awesome! As I explore other ports of call, I'll discover who needs what and how much they need. Patrician takes place in a huge world, and every region has its own market forces at work. Sometimes it's worth sailing way out there to find a good deal. Trade isn't the only way for me to build wealth. Here's the moneylender, for example. I can take out a loan and repay it, or even grant loans to other merchants in the world. That's a pretty nice way to make my money work for me. So let's see. I've got 31,000 gold here. This guy wants 16,000. Yeah, okay. I can adjust the interest rate a little bit, up and down. But remember, high interest makes for mean citizens. As I play, I have to balance the social effects with the economic. I can't just buy my way into power. Well, I can't just buy my way into power. Remember, my goal is to lead the league, and every leader needs willing followers. So social graces and popular support are at least as important as money, because as the game develops, I get more and more involved in politics, and that means winning over votes. I'm not on the roster yet, but soon. Oh yes, soon. My trading office is the most important building as the game begins. Here I can check my finances and stocks, as well as my reputation. I can also employ an administrator, and this is one part of the game that I really like. As I master parts of the game, 
I can eventually employ people who automatically handle the routine tasks while I move on to the bigger picture. My administrator, for example, can manage the inventory of goods in my warehouse according to the priorities that I lay down. Everyone I hire gets better at their job over time, so I end up paying them more and more, but that's okay. It's the price of doing business. I can keep that price more under control by constructing my own resources, raw materials, workshops, that kind of thing. I just pick the building and lay it down on a spot inside the city walls, thank you. You never know when the local prince might get a bug up his butt and decide to besiege the town. Now that pitch maker also keeps people employed, and that keeps them happy, and that makes them want to vote for me later. It's all tied together. Every building in town offers its own unique avenue to power and wealth, if you know how to use it, and if you keep your wits about you. So, keep your manual handy. This is your best friend while you're learning how to play this game, hands down. Instead of taking you through everything and showing you how it all works kind of piecemeal, I'm going to show you how the game gives me opportunities to pursue in whatever way I see fit. This is my favorite part of the game. So, I've been approached by a matchmaker who, for a small finder's fee, will set me up with a delightful mate. Sure, why not? Being married is one of the ways I can raise my reputation, and it's the closest thing the 14th century has to a dating service. So, I'll say yes, go find me a mate. I'll go about my business. Aha! I have a proposal. Anna, Joseph, Miller, large dowry, picture enclosed, decide within three weeks. Well, I think that looks fine. The wedding will take place on the 17th. And guess who makes all the arrangements? I do. So, basically, I'm going to hold a celebration in my hometown for the nuptials. That means I've got to have enough food, drink, and luxuries to cover everyone who shows up. A real swinging bash can shoot my rep into orbit, but a limp get-together will turn me into a wallflower. It'll be expensive, but it'll be worth it. I'd better gather the goods and get the party ready. And, of course, pirates attack my ship. Crap. Well, at least it's only one of them. I'll just run broad here. A quick turn. Ouch. I can't stay in that cannon fire for long. Fortunately, I've got a good lead on him now, but he's catching up. Uh, if only I'd been able to outfit my ship with cannon, I might have had a chance. But no. Well, he's boarded me. My men fight. We're about equal but it's pretty obvious he's going to win. So, me booty's been plundered. How embarrassing. I'll sail back to Malmo with nothing left. Really in dire straits, I need to hire more sailors to crew my ship. Uh, might be worth making a deal in the side room, but... No, can't handle that much cargo. I guess I'll just sail home. Fine, taxes. That's the 7th of March. I'm getting married on the 17th. I have 10 days to get this thing together. Okay, I've made some good sales here. That'll fatten the coffers. Wow, meat and beer are in high demand here. Damn. Well, iron goods are always dependable, and there's meat for sale in Malmo, and honey too. Nice. Beer in Stettin, very good. I can't afford a lot, but I can afford enough. I'll 
I'll just put that in my office here. Well, I need to buy some more fish for the party, but I don't have any money. I hate to do it, I'll have to sell a little of my beer. And go to the money lender to take out a loan. Darn. Let's see, this looks good. 10,000, paid back in 32 weeks. Pretty high interest rate, but oh well, it'll do. Now I'll get that fish I need. Grain, spices, wine, I gotta have a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's a nice repast. Anything extra I can always sell off afterward. Well, there's nothing left to do, so we'll just fast forward. There's the wedding! Aww. I always cry at weddings. So I get a note to let me know how it was received. Oh wow, a fantastic celebration. 895 guests, lordly catering. That's a serious boost to my reputation. That's the kind of boost that it turns out money can buy. And my dowry? A ship with 18 barrels of goods on board. Sweet. So that's kind of how the game plays out. I make my own decisions and plot how best to get what I want, and the game challenges me in ways I can't anticipate. There are lots of avenues open to me as long as I know how to make my economic might and my good reputation work to my benefit. All kinds of factors can wreak havoc on my designs. Sometimes nature throws me a storm to slow my shipping down. Or dense fogs. Certainly not the worst weather I've had to contend with. But when the Black Plague hits, it casts a pall over the entire town. When I grow the money and wherewithal to build up the town more, I'm going to erect a hospital. Saving lives is great for business and prestige and, you know, sort of the right thing to do, too. But for now, the good people of Lubbock are just going to have to suffer. The campaign and single-player games are a lot of fun, but multiplayer really brings out a lot of new dimensions to the high seas. So my girlfriend and I installed the games and set our options to easy and dove right in. What? What, you don't, you don't believe I have a girlfriend just because I play video games? Fine. You people and your stereotypes. Fine. There's a cat. Here she is. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, appreciate it. Happy. So here's one of my ships heading to my home port, and hey, there's my girlfriend's. I can tell by the little red anchor. Hi, sweetie. Hello. Oh, hey, she's trading at my home port. Well, that's okay. I'll just unload some of this pig iron I've got in my hold, and hey, wait a minute. Looks like she beat me to it. Well, fine. I'll just store what I've got in my warehouse till the price goes back up. On the other hand, that glut of pig iron is going to drive the price of iron goods down through the floor soon, and since I've got a trading office in that town, I'm in a great position to clean up. Anyone else would have to sail in and wait for the right time, so I guess she won't be sleeping on the couch after all. Since we're playing in the same world, time goes by at the same rate for both of us. While one of us was sailing, the other would be trading or doing something else, so we had to settle on a common game tempo that was slower than the single-player tempo. And I discovered that I really liked the opportunity to ease back from the super speedy sail trade sail mentality and instead start considering my other options. Remember, every building has a potential on the game as long as I take the time to learn about it and make a plan. And we had a great time playing, and we keep coming back to it. I mean, what more do you want from a game? Patrician 3 is available for download from Good Old Games for a couple of bucks. Seriously, for the price of a combo meal at Schmuckies, you can buy this game online from Good Old Games and have it on your computer in minutes. Now, I really love Good Old Games, and I'm not just saying that because I'm an affiliate. No, no. 
Good Old Games has exactly the right idea, because when you buy the game, you, like, really buy it. You own it. No copy protection, no DRM, no stupid activations or CDs to scratch and lose and replace. The game wants you to play it. It's yours forever. It's just waiting for you, like a faithful puppy. Plus, they give you lots of extras. With Patrician, I got not only the manual, but also the map that would have come in the box, and the soundtrack, too. Nice. Okay, so let's talk business here. If you sign up with Good Old Games through the link at Longtail Gamer, I get like a quarter or something every time you buy a game. It's good for you, it's good for me, it's awesome. All I ask is that you consider using the link on the Longtail Gamer page when you buy from Good Old Games. It's just good business sense, and hey, if you love this game, you know where I'm coming from, don't you? Don't you? Yeah, you do. And that's it for this episode of Longtail Gamer, produced by Noir Chicken Studios in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and released under a Creative Commons license. My name is Cameron Goebel. I am a long-tail gamer. You can be one, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's this book I've been meaning to read by this fella named um, Machiavelli. I'm confused about how he ties wealth and power in the Renaissance to 1980s pop music iconography, but, you know, I guess that's why he's the authority and I'm just a gamer. Thanks for tuning in.